Thank you for tuning in to Macroview Television, and welcome to a brand new edition of Taiwan Outlook, the program that presents the different faces and lets you hear their stories on Taiwan. I'm your host, Ray Guo. The territorial and sovereignty dispute in the South China Sea has been an unpredictable factor to regional peace and stability. On today's program, we're delighted to have Dr. Song Yanhui, who's currently a research fellow of the Institute of European and American Studies at the Academic Seneca, to come on the program and share with us his views about the July 12th arbitration ruling and its impact on regional peace and security. Welcome to our program, Dr. Sung. Well, thank you, Dr. Wu. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. First, can you briefly describe to us the background regarding the July 12th arbitration ruling on the South China Sea dispute? The background uh, against the arbitration case mm -hmm. certainly is related to disputes yes. in the South China Sea, mm -hmm. both sovereignty right. and maritime rights and okay. interests. All right. So it has been many, many years yes. for this kind of disputes in the South China Sea. Yes. But then in uh, April 2012, the uh, Philippines sent its warships to detain the Chinese fishing vessels okay. in the waters uh, near Scarborough Shore. Okay. That began the escalation of disputes okay. between the People's Republic of China and the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So then in January 2013, mm -hmm. the government of the Philippines mm -hmm. decided to file an arbitration case against China mm -hmm. to settle the disputes okay. in the South China Sea. All right. So that's the beginning of the arbitral proceedings. All right. And uh, given the fact that we know the final verdict was completely in favor of the Philippines, almost, okay? And uh, so do you think there was due process in the arbitration? You know, for example, from the selection of the arbitrators, from the hearings that were held, and uh, from the different angles on this very sensitive and controversial subject, do you think the ruling was fair? In my personal perspective, yes, I think the ruling is not fair. Okay, and it has problems of due process of law, and it has procedural fairness problem. Mm -hmm. And from from the perspective of Taiwan, many because mm -hmm. because Taiwan has been excluded yes. from the proceedings from the beginning. Okay. And at the end, the ruling uh, shocked so many government officials, scholars, mm -hmm. regarding the status of Taiping Island, for example. Of course, the, the tribunal also decided that mm -hmm. the Nine Dash Line claim, mm -hmm. or historic waters claim, okay. are outside of the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, yes. which is illegal. Mm -hmm. So that ha well has something to do with the Taiwan's uh, claims Taiwan's uh, maritime interests in the South China Sea. Mm. So uh, this case, uh, from my personal uh, opinion, it has many, many flaws and problems. Mm -hmm. um, so from Taiwan's perspective, we do not accept. recognize, yes. we do not accept mm -hmm. the ruling, okay. given the fact that Taiwan is not a party that arbitration case. All right. And given the implications of the July 12th ruling, what do you think the likely reactions are among the different claimants? You know, for example, the Philippines, uh, the PRC, you know, Malaysian government, you know, and also Vietnam, and also Indonesia. What do you think the reactions will be among the stakeholders? Uh, allow me to explain the, the binding force All of right. this ruling. All right. According to Article 296 mm. of the UNCLOS, or the 1982 Law of the Sea Convention, mm -hmm. and according to Article 11 mm -hmm. of Annex 7 to okay. that convention, yes. this war is final. 
So there's no and way for another appeal or... No way to appeal. Even if you have new evidence? That's a different thing. But okay. I, just, I say, just mentioned that this is final award mm -hmm. should be uh, implemented, accepted by the two parties. Okay, the Philippines In the case of the Philippines the and China, right? Okay. But there are other countries which are not party to this case, such as... You mentioned Vietnam, mm -hmm. Malaysia, yes. and maybe the United States. Yes, Taiwan. Taiwan. Well. Mm -hmm. But it comes to the very uh, complicated question if under one China policy and from the perspective of the Philippines, would Taiwan be a part of China uh -huh. in a larger sense? Okay. Uh, based upon which constitution you are talking about, right? Uh -huh. From Taiwan's constitution, yes. Taiwan is part of China, and that China is referred to the Republic ROC. of China. Yes. But in, in any case, this case, from Taiwan's perspective, from the United States, and from other mm -hmm. non parties to the disputes or yes. to this case, mm -hmm. they have different implement, uh, impl implications, right. different meaning, based upon their national interests. Okay based upon their South China Sea policy position. Mm -hmm. So they will try to interpret the ruling made by the tribunal mm -hmm. in July. From the United States, maybe it's very important to uh, abide by mm -hmm. the international law, respect okay. international law. Mm -hmm. It's very important to maintain freedom of navigation okay. and overflight. And it's very important to settle disputes Yes. by peaceful means. Mm -hmm. And Philippines is one of the parties, of yes. course. Mm -hmm. And Philippines is siding with the United States. Some people argue that the United States is behind the arbitration case to support the mm -hmm. Philippines to yes. file the case. Mm -hmm. But in any case, and there are other countries like Malaysia and Vietnam, they say that as uh, claimants yes. in the South China Sea, you know, the zone, maritime zone and interests should not be affected as a third party by this arbitration case. Okay. Likewise, mm -hmm. Taiwan, we are a party, a stakeholder of mm -hmm. the very important resources and the sovereignty issue in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. So we are not bound by that arbitration okay. case ruling. All right. So what do you think that between the principal parties, the Philippines and the PRC, do you think there's any possibility based on the award by the tribunal uh, any possibilities for the two sides to try to negotiate on the bilateral basis, which is already happening because the former president of the Philippines, Fidel Ramos, has already visited Hong Kong and met with uh, senior officials from the PRC. You know, and then the, there's the likelihood that the two sides could come to the negotiation table. So do you think that could be a way of reconciling the differences between the two sides? It's possible. Okay. Actually, uh, former President Ramos mm -hmm. went to Hong Kong to yes. meet with the uh, former Deputy Minister Hu Yin mm -hmm. and the President of the Chinese uh, South China Sea Institute in Haiko. Mm -hmm. But they had the informal talk Meeting, in yes. Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And that might be possible opportunity for mm -hmm. China and the yes. Philippines mm -hmm. to enter into another round of official serious negotiation yes. based upon the ruling of the arbitration case. Yes. But no matter what, the two parties have to uh, settle their disputes mm -hmm. in accordance with a number of documents, such as the 2002 Declaration on Conduct of the parties in the South China Sea. Yeah, the Code and, of Conduct. Right, mm -hmm. not the Code of Conduct, but declaration. Yes. A Code of Conduct will be Big. adopted in the yes. future, mm -hmm. right? So there are other bilateral negotiation re uh, requirements mm -hmm. between the two sides of the arbitration case. I mean, talking about the Philippines uh -huh. and China. Yeah. They have adopted an uh, issue official statements saying that our disputes should be settled through friendly bilateral negotiation. Mm -hmm. And then that's come to the question or the approach, so to speak, dual track, dual track approach mm -hmm. insisted on by the Chinese side.
yes. which means negotiation, bilateral negotiation. And then another one, multilateral approach, okay. such as adopting a regional code of conduct in the South China Sea. So in conclusion, regarding this question, it's possible. All and right. we are seeing a new president in the Philippines, mm -hmm. Duterte. Yes. And he is different from, from Aquino III. Yes. And he's moving closer to China and moving away from the United States, mm -hmm. which will affect the development of the uh, South China Sea uh, disputes in the coming future. All right, but one point of contention between the Philippines and the PRC is that the PRC insists on putting aside the arbitration ruling before the two sides can sit down and talk. Would you think that's a possibility the Philippines will accept that? It's challenging. <laughs> yes. uh, it's not easy to accept that proposal yes. made by the PRC against the Philippines. Yes. But no matter what, it's a give and take or compromise. So in my opinion, mm -hmm. the two sides will consider will argue, will mm -hmm. find a way to reach a, an agreement. Mm -hmm. And that's why Ramos went to Hong Kong instead yes. of going to Beijing. Beijing. Mm -hmm. He acted as a special env envoy for mm -hmm. the new president. Yes. But before that kind of understanding agreement reached, I think they, they are um, challenges yes. to, be, to be watched closely. Yes, so it's not going to be a one-step thing. They, they can automatically start the negotiation. No. That's, that's true, but from now until September, yes. because G20, yes. because the UN General Assembly meeting, we are going to see a lot of the focus discussion <laughs> okay. on right. the ruling of the uh, and China the scene. obligation yeah. to abide by the decision made by the tribunal. Yes. And that kind of international public opinion might affect. But from now until then, for, for China, uh -huh. I think the best approach is to get the agreement from mm -hmm. the Philippines to have bilateral negotiation. maritime, not only negotiation, uh -huh. but also maritime cooperation projects, right. such as fisheries, okay. such as tourism, All right. maybe other possible All cooperation. Right. Dr. Soon, we've been talking about the territorial and sovereignty dispute mm -hmm. in the South China Sea. And uh, what is the generally accepted international standard of sovereignty? I know there are some elements that must be met. Would you mind sharing them with us? Sovereignty is kind of an exclusive right uh -huh. to exercise supreme political authority yes. over a defined territory. Yes. And this kind of supreme political authority can be exercised mm -hmm. within your territory. Yes. And in order to obtain territory, acquire territories, mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of the, uh, ways okay. to achieve to that. Mm -hmm. get that mm -hmm. sovereignty. For right. example, maybe discovery, maybe uh, occupation, okay. and maybe prescription. So after you get that uh, ownership of okay. the territory mm -hmm. and you, you exercise sovereignty mm -hmm. over your land, yes. your territorial waters, mm -hmm. and your airspace. Okay. So that kind of sovereignty is different mm -hmm. from sovereign rights okay. within the 200 nautical miles of exclusive economic Economy zone. zone. Yes. For example, a coastal state mm -hmm. can exercise sovereign rights uh -huh. over the exploitation mm -hmm. or exploration development of resources, both okay. living and non-living resources, mm -hmm. in the uh, exclusive economic zone. Mm -hmm. But the coastal state cannot exercise sovereignty. No. But in the territory sea, mm -hmm. a coastal state can exercise sovereignty, which means exclusive. No other country are able to exercise any authority within your territorial water except mm -hmm. innocent passage. Okay. So that's different concept. And so international standards, some countries argue that because mm -hmm. the, the geographic uh, proximity yes. or because of historical rights, Reasons. and yes. it, it's difficult to establish that you own the, the piece of islands mm -hmm. or the territory because mm -hmm. under international law, the standard or the doctrines include discovery, occupation, 
and prescription. Okay. But sometimes in the past, yeah. it's possible to occupy some land territories by using force. Okay. But right now, it's under contemporary international law, and mm -hmm. UN Charter is against that kind of use of force mm -hmm. to um, obtain new right. territories, right? right. Okay. And sometimes different parties can agree, I see cut a piece of my land territory yes. to mm -hmm. you as a, a result of the war, some, mm. but not anymore right now. No. Okay, and let me ask you that you and I both study law at Berkeley. Do you think the standard of international, what's recognized internationally uh, for sovereignty, is that clear, is that fair? Uh, because you look at the Republic of China on Taiwan, we'll probably fit almost all, if not all of them, the elements of what constitutes sovereignty, but we're not recognized as a sovereign state. Okay, there are differences <laughs> regarding sovereignty and, and national state. Uh -huh. For example, as a country, mm -hmm. government recognized by other government, other country, you uh -huh. need to uh, meet a number of requirements. If we, we look at the requirements of territory, yes. no doubt about that, ROC, we have the Land territory. territory yes. What about population? Also, yeah. we have the, the 23 million uh, population, right? Yes. And administration effect. Um, all kinds of requirements are yeah. met. pretty much met, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But then, what about sovereignty over, for example, islands in the mm. South China Sea? No. We are claiming yes. that Taiwan Island has been under Taiwan's ROC's effective control since 1956. Uh -huh. But Philippines and Vietnam argue that Taiping mm -hmm. Island is part of the, their territories. In because the of geographic proximity. So, so now yes. this comes the question, who owns mm -hmm. that piece of island mm -hmm. based upon historical evidence, mm -hmm. based upon naming okay. the island, based right. upon discovery and occupation. So mm -hmm. a lot of different kind of, the, but is it fair or not? It's because international law is one of the international politics. Uh, exactly. And you have to uh, interpret yes. international law based upon your national interests mm -hmm. and based upon your national power. Yeah, international law cannot operate in vacuum. No. It has to be operated under the existing international political economic system. Exactly. And given the fact that the China as a claimant to South China Sea dispute and also a party to the arbitration, China has stated it will not acknowledge, it will not participate, and certainly will not accept the arbitration ruling. And China being the number two economy of the world today, what do you think? You know, the kinds of international pressure and criticism that could be levied against China if China continues not to accept the arbitration ruling. From the very beginning of this arbitral proceeding, mm -hmm. China said that yes. no acceptance mm -hmm. of the request from the Philippines to go to the court to settle the disputes. Mm -hmm. No participation. Yes and no implementation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So after ruling, China said that this award is a piece of waste paper, paper. Mm -hmm. and this arbitration is a covered by mm -hmm. political motivation of political purposes. Yes. So from Chinese uh, perception or position, it is not going to accept, not going to implement this, the, the ruling. Mm -hmm. But then for all kinds, Country, especially major countries, the number one economy, the United States, maybe number two, China, number three, maybe Japan, the, the, and then we may, maybe can include Russian Federation or the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. They went to the court and they were um, sued by other parties to the disputes to settle their disputes. Okay. And the ruling is against mm -hmm. the Russian Federation. For example, 2014, mm -hmm. the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea ruled that the Soviet Union, Russian for the government, mm -hmm. the Rus Russia, mm -hmm. violated international law because of arresting 
the Arctic sunrise, the vessels fly the flag of the Netherlands okay. with the 30 mm -hmm. advocates, okay. cruise members mm -hmm. from Greenpeace mm -hmm. International Law. Yes. And the tribunal said you're against international law and then you should release those detained 30 cruise members of mm -hmm. the Arctic Sunrise vessel, right? Mm -hmm. But the Russian Federation said, no, no we, are, we don't accept your jurisdiction. Yes. And we are not going to implement the ruling made by the tribunal yes. to compensate yes. the Netherlands because mm -hmm. the, the, the government of the Netherlands paid the, the bond Mm -hmm. for the, the vessel. So the United, the, the, the Russian, Soviet Union, the Russian yeah. Federation does not abide by the ruling. No. What about the United States? Yeah. In it's 1986, the Nicaragua yes. case, right? The mm -hmm. mining case, right? The United States also said we are not going to accept that ruling. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more recent example is the ruling against the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm regarding the establishment of marine protected area in Charcoal Island. Yeah. Again, the tribunal said, you <laughs> violated the law of this convention, mm -hmm. but the United Kingdom continue to remain to have that marine protected area. Mm -hmm. What about China? Yeah. China said, well, I'm not going to follow this. No. Because we argue that the tribunal does not have jurisdiction over the case first. Mainly because in 2006, mm -hmm. we declare that those disputes related to sovereignty, mm -hmm. related to maritime delimitation, mm -hmm. or maybe military activities, or historical base, or historical rights, are excluded from the compulsory mechanism for mm -hmm. settlement of disputes. Okay. So there are other reasons. But anyway, in this case, China will have a problem of reputation costs, just yes. like the United States in mm -hmm. the past. Yeah. You should set a, a good example for all countries in the world, mm -hmm. and you are responsible state, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stakeholder. Mm -hmm. You should abide by the ruling made by the tribunal yes. in July, last mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. But then it's come to the very important question. First, sovereignty. Yes. Second, national interests. Third, interpretation of international law. Yes. And also China made it very clear you know, back in the, you know, 1982 when the UN Convention on the Sea of the Law was passed, China accepted, but on one precondition, anything that involves territory, sovereignty, China does not recognize the court. Yes, <laughs> all parties to that convention yes. have the right to opt out. Yes. Mainly because the concern about sovereignty issues. Exactly. And so, maritime delimitation are also related to sovereignty. Okay, all right. We need to, we, uh, you mentioned earlier about the new Filipino president, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Mr. Rodrigo uh, Duterte. And uh, he seems to be very different uh, in many ways. On uh, domestic issues, he's a strong man against uh, corruption, mm -hmm. against drug trafficking. And on international issue, at least on the South China Sea dispute, he shows a lot of conciliation uh, towards China. He's willing to talk, even though the exact details of the conditions and things yet to be worked out. How do you think that he's going to react and act differently compared with his predecessor? Um, allow me to make it clear yes. that all presidents of different countries will be the same. Okay, at because, the end of the day. Because they have to defend their national, national interests. interests. Yes. And the foreign policy conducted or implemented, adopted by the, the leaders yes. of the country mm -hmm. will based upon his understanding of the national, national interests. Interest. Yes. The new president is not going to give up the ruling made by the tribunal. Okay. So the new president, we're trying, we based upon that ruling okay. made by the tribunal, and we want to negotiate okay. with China mm -hmm. bilaterally. Okay. And so the, the new president, yes, that's true, he is moving away mm -hmm. from the United States mm -hmm. in comparison with his uh, prede predecessor, mm -hmm. you know, Aquino III, mm -hmm. and he's moving closer 
to China. Okay. And that's also true. Mm -hmm. So that comes to the question, how do we interpret these kind of different approach okay. adopted by the new president to manage mm -hmm. the territorial disputes mm -hmm. between the two countries, China oh. and the Philippines. Okay. So it's an ongoing process and we believe that this mm -hmm. new president is paying more attention to trade issue mm -hmm. between, the, between the Philippines and China. Yes. And maybe he's keen to seek mm -hmm. financial support from China mm -hmm. to build railroads yeah. in the southern, southern yeah. part of mm -hmm. the Philippines, right? Uh, yes. So uh, yes. in the coming uh, month, I would say month, maybe okay. even weeks, okay. we are going to see more intensive bilateral nego negotiations okay. between the Philippines and China. Mm -hmm. So after the former President Ramos visited Hong Kong. Yes. What next? Mm -hmm. Probably next round of higher level of bilateral, neg bilateral negotiations mm -hmm. between the Philippines and China will be held soon. Okay. So that will help to pay the way for bilateral mm -hmm. maritime cooperation okay. in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, maybe China will say, well, let's see, we are able to settle our disputes okay. via bilateral negotiation. Mm -hmm. So outside of Japan, the United States, there's no need no. for you to come here to intervene in our, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, our backyard. The, <laughs> our uh, jurisdiction or okay. to, to deal with the South China Sea uh, disputes. Okay. Let's now, Dr. Sung, shift the focus onto home, onto Taiwan. Yes. Uh, we are, of course, not a member of the United Nations, therefore we will not a claimant in the arbitration. But, you know, according to former President Ma ying and also current President Tsai Ing-wen, mm -hmm. they both felt the, you know, the arbitration ruling was not acceptable, was not legally binding, and primarily because of two reasons. Uh, one is the, the verdict ruled the Taiping Island was not an island, it was a rock. And then the second thing is calling Taiwan the China authority of Taiwan, okay? So, you know, these factors aside, do you think in the, you know, coming months, mm -hmm. how can President Tsai Ing-wen and her administration try to show the resolve and the commitment to the protection of the ROC sovereignty and territorial integrity in the South China Sea? Uh, I think the Thai administration uh -huh. has to set up uh, an expert group, a group okay. of experts, okay. to study carefully the ruling. Okay. In particular, those decisions mm -hmm. or interpretations mm -hmm. made by the tribunal, okay. which have the potential to affect Taiwan's interests. Okay. So that's very important. The second one. Mm -hmm. The Thai administration has to study very carefully mm -hmm. about the historical archives related to U ship line. Okay. Because one of the core submissions mm -hmm. made by the Philippines is about the, the legality yeah. of the Night Dash yes, line. line. Yes. And that's come to the question of historical rights, mm -hmm. traditional fishing rights mm -hmm. or other. Okay. So I think that's the second a step for the Thai administration to study carefully mm -hmm. on, on those previous historical records. Yes. And that those historical evidence or mm -hmm. records will have very important influence on the legal status of Taiping Island. Yes. Because under Article 121, in mm -hmm. particular paragraph 3, mm -hmm. in order to be considered fully entitled island, you need to meet the requirements. Yes. One, of, one of them is maintain human habitation or sustain human habitation. Mm -hmm. And the second one is sustain economic life of your own. Mm -hmm. So those evidence, historical evidence, where are you going to get that? And mm -hmm. are you going to convince other countries mm -hmm. that Taiping Island is not a rock? No. Is, mm -hmm. is 
an island. An island mm -hmm. which can generate mm -hmm. 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone mm -hmm. or continental shelf, right? Okay. Yes. So that's the third thing. And there are other because G20, United Nations General Assembly, and international uh, mass media uh, reaction or analysis regarding Chinese response, regarding other countries claiming to abide by the ruling. So he, she, mm -hmm. President Chai, needs to observe carefully mm -hmm. the reactions of those countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And maybe the United States will try to ask President Chai that you need to clarify mm -hmm. your maritime claim regarding your ship lines. Yes. And you need to clarify your position based upon the ruling uh -huh. made by the arbitral tribunal. Yeah. And President Chai said that uh, when she received the interview from the Washington Post on July 22nd, mm -hmm. that, well, we are not going to accept that. There are a number of reasons. You mentioned that the Taiwan Authority of China. Uh -huh. But she said that it cannot be not acceptable, mainly because using this title. Yes. But maybe other people can argue that. Why should you jump into that uh, conclusion? Mm, into uh, that Taiwan trap, Authority yes. of China. China, maybe Republic of China. Mm -hmm. And you were elected as the president of the Republic of China. When uh -huh. that uh, 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 ruling, uh, a war indicating Taiwan Authority of China. China, uh -huh. that from our interpretation will be 92 consensus, one China, so ROC. So that's other other challenge uh -huh. for President Chai. Okay, and very interesting that uh, Dr. Sung, you mentioned about the nine dash line. Yes. And uh, this is something, of course, related to cross trade relations. And uh, since taking over office uh, more than three months ago, mm -hmm. uh, the cross trade relations has been you know, pretty much in a standstill. And uh, what would you think the arbitration ruling will have its impact on cross trade relations? What would that be? Yeah, you are right. The <laughs> cross trade relations, uh, the tensions uh -huh. uh, regarding cross trade relations has been rising. Okay. In, in particular, of the uh, Beijing announced mm -hmm. that no official communication mm -hmm. between the two sides. No. So we see that. And then uh, the ruling made by the tribunal will have some kind of impact on Chai Ing-wen's cross strait uh, policy. Okay. And, but it's unlikely mm -hmm. for President Chai to grab the opportunity to upgrade or improve the cross strait relations mm -hmm. between Ta Beijing and Ta yeah. Taipei, yes. mainly because her policy priority set on Domestic. Taiwan, mm -hmm. the United States relations, mm -hmm. um, new southbound policy, yes. and maybe the importance of Taiwan ASEAN trade relations plus Taiwan Japan. Yes. So cross trade relations is coming to a difficult stage, mainly because President Chai mm -hmm. does not want to recognize or accept the 92 consensus on one China principle. Yes. And that will create obstacles. Yes. And China is watching. And China is given, is pushing Chai to accept that. Mm -hmm. So we are going to see something uh, going, going on regarding to the cross-strait cooperation uh, in the South China Sea. Uh, having said that, we heard, we, we read the newspapers that uh, the, the Minister of Interior, yes. Dr. Ye Jun Rong, mm -hmm flew to Taipei Island, and we are going to see some kind of international press conference after he's coming back this, to today. This, yes, all right. And given the fact that these two issues are very much intimately related, what do you think if in the future we have another higher level visit uh, Taipei Island, would there be more destabilization? What do you oh, think? Before I answer your question, let me uh, go back a little bit to the point regarding cross strait cooperation or okay. cross strait communication. Right. Mainly because the difficulties mm -hmm. uh, for two sides to meet okay. on official level yes. to talk about the important South China Sea issues, South China Sea cooperation, mm -hmm. and the ruling yes. of the, the tribunal, right? So it's very important for uh, think tanks. Okay. Of scholars yes. um, from two sides of the strait mm -hmm. to enter into 
discussions yes. or exchange of views mm -hmm. regarding how to respond to the ruling which touch upon the very important issue of sovereignty and maritime interests, mm -hmm. which I, I, I meant you ship line, yes. or ownership of islands, mm -hmm. and then historical rights, and so on. So I think it's very important to have this kind of a dialogue mm -hmm. mechanism okay. so that the scholars, mm -hmm. think tanks, are able to assist okay. the government to enter into discussion, mm -hmm. serious okay. discussion. All right. Another area of concern after the, you know, of the verdict by the tribunal mm -hmm. is the relationship within the ASEAN member states. We already hear different opinions and views about how the ASEAN member states should treat the arbitration ruling. Uh, what is exactly the status of relations among the ASEAN member states? Um, ten ASEAN member states <laughs> have different views. Yes. Maybe we can um, uh, roughly to categorize into two groups. Okay. One support Chinese position, the other one maybe against the Chinese position. And actually in May, I think, or April mm -hmm. this year, China did go to Cambodia, yeah. Brunei, mm -hmm. uh, and Laos yes. to court support for mm -hmm. its position yes. or the approach mm -hmm. to deal with the arbitration case, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he got that support. Yes. And, many, and then there are other member states of the ASEAN, mm -hmm. especially the Philippines, Vietnam, mm -hmm. and Singapore. They asked China to participate in yes. arbitration case mm -hmm. and to abide by the ruling you know, after the, the announcement of the, the award, right? Yes. And for example, recently the, the Singaporean Prime Minister Li Xianlong visited Washington, D.C. Yes. And he said that the rule of law is very important and mm -hmm. it's very important for China to abide by the ruling. Mm -hmm. So that upset China. China mm -hmm. was mad, anger. Mm -hmm. you know? so, and China's uh, official, uh, Global Times, and even saying that, you, all, you, you Singapore mm -hmm. is now serving as coordinator state yeah. between ASEAN and China. Mm -hmm. And you should reflect the ASEAN position yes. regarding all the South China Sea issue. On that issue, we know that the ASEAN is coming to an interesting development uh, which is similar to the situation in July 2012. Okay. Because at that time, many mm -hmm. because the chair of the ASEAN, Cambodia, mm -hmm. decided not to accept the um, arguments or statements made by the Philippines yes. to include the Scarborough Show dispute. Mm -hmm. And at the end, for the first time, the ASEAN foreign ministers meeting yes. did not issue joint communicate. No. And this July, four years later, this mm -hmm. July, the joint communicate did not mention anything about the, about ruling. the ruling. Yes. And if we would look at the uh, 20, uh, that's, uh, 23rd ASEAN Regional Forum, mm -hmm. again, yeah. no mentioning. If we look at the, uh, the sixth East Asian Summit mm -hmm. Foreign mm -hmm. Ministers meeting, again, there was no even mention. the United States. Yes kind of a change in its tune, yes. soften its totally position down. right to ask the two parties to enter into bilateral negotiations to settle your disputes. Yes. And based upon the ruling of course. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing that kind of the new development in the, in the South China Sea. But a main development to be watched carefully is the G20 summit. Mm -hmm. We are going to see that kind of a big confrontation mm -hmm. or maybe some demonstration of your policy, your position okay. between the one, one side, the US-led alliance, mm -hmm. Japan, Australia, or no. And, yes. and, and, then, and then the other side will be uh, Chinese uh, friends, uh, allies, Cambodia, Laos. And so we are see, going to see some kind of a competition, confrontation. Yeah, between uh, the competing camps. Yes. 
All right. And we know that under President Tsai Ing-wen, there's a priority attached to the so-called new southbound policy. Yes. All right. And given the fact that this now become a government priority, does that limit Taiwan's options or does it give Taiwan more opportunities in terms of vis-a-vis -vis the South China Sea dispute? My answer is both. Both. Okay. It's uh, uh, an opportunity. Okay. It's also uh, limitation. All right. It's important for the Tsai administration mm -hmm. to think about the three S, three South policy. Okay. New Southbound, okay. which means two Souths, yes. South Asia mm -hmm. and Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. The other South would be South China Sea. Yes. If the Tsai administration is going to promote the development of the go, uh, new Go South, Southbound policy, I think it's important to consider the possibility of blue economy, consider the possibility of the trade agreement, consider the possibility of maritime cooperation such as illegal fishing or okay. fish, fisheries cooperation. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can discuss of, uh, marine ecotourism yes. in mm -hmm. the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. and Given the fact that uh, Article 122 and Article 123 mm -hmm. of the UNCLOS provides that the South China Sea is semi-enclosed sea, and all the neighboring countries have the duty, obligation to enter into cooperation okay. in different areas. Fishing mm -hmm. is one of them. Yes. Na and marine scientific research, another one. Mm -hmm. so, so the Thai administration can consider that as an opportunity, one, to expand its mm -hmm. link okay. with Southeast Asian countries, even South Asian countries. On the other hand, Thai administration can try to use this issue to improve its relations yes. with Beijing. Yes. Because no matter what, China is your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You cannot walk away. You have to deal with, in addition to that, you are going to talk about one bell, one road, yeah. AIIB, and mm -hmm. the maritime corporations, a zero road corporation, maybe RCEP. Yes. And you, if, you, if you don't have a good relationship with China, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's very difficult for you to promote, to develop your new southbound policy. Yes. Another factor is the United States. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about United States, we can see that there are changes in U.S. policy conduct in foreign policy. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, the current TPP yes. you know, may not be realized as a lot of people expected because you know, uh, President Obama is coming down the final few months yes. of his presidency and the two you know, presidential nominees from the two major parties in the U.S. presidential election, both have said repeatedly that they will not support TPP if TPP means the jobs are going away to overseas. So in the sense that the U.S. role in Asia, even though there was that pivot toward Asia policy, mm -hmm. it may be changing. So do you think that on the long term, maybe it's, you know, the time is on China's side if China can just wait it out with a new president in the U.S. coming in, there could be changes in U.S. attitude towards South China Sea. What do you think, Dr. Song? Yeah, Dr. Wu, you are raising a very interesting, a very important question mm -hmm. and trend of development, mainly because the U.S. presidential elections come yes. in. So starting from September until yes. November 9th, we are going to see that American <laughs> politicians, they are be, will be very busy yes. uh, campaigning and, and so on. On the other hand, President Obama is going to step down soon, yes. January 2017. Yes. And maybe he has no time, no power or yeah. no desire mm -hmm. to push so hard against China. Yes. So from now until the, the election in November, we are going to see interesting development regarding Precisely. Chinese action. Yes. What kind of action will be taken by China. Mm -hmm. If the Philippines say no, we are not going to enter a serious bilateral uh, uh, negotiation, negotiation with you, mm -hmm. China is going to conduct land reclamation activities in the water surrounding the Calabro Shoal. Yes. Maybe China is going
going to announce the, the baseline in mm -hmm. a separately yeah. as a group of yeah. islands, you know. Mm -hmm. And maybe right now we are seeing that China is developing, is putting the hangar yeah. on the Rose Runway in the uh, uh, Fiery Cross Reef, uh -huh. Mischief Reef, and mm -hmm. Subit Reef. Yeah. And the American the think tank report that is a threat of yeah. military, militariz militarization. Yeah. So region, that kind of yes. thing is very interesting. Mm -hmm. If the United States, the candidates say, well, we have to show no sh uh, short of a muscle yeah. during the campaigning, right? So we send our warship and freedom navigation and, and bombers mm -hmm. and to challenge Chinese action. At the same time, China is taking advantage of this the period of time yes. and doing more. So we are going to see that kind of co confrontation, escalation mm -hmm. of the tension between the United States and uh -huh. China. Okay. So that's a very good uh, uh, question and okay. we have to take, uh, pay more attention to that. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Sung, for being a special guest on our program today. Certainly want to wish you all the best in your future personal and professional endeavors. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dr. Wu. I'm glad to be here. You know, I learned a lot from you, Dr. Well, thank you. Yes. Yes. And thank you for watching our program today. I'll see you next time on Macroview Television. Thank you.